All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. issues in EIA um, you know the coverage of project assessment um, which project should have an assessment that's one of the um, issues with EIA another is the criteria for inclusion and exclusion of a project for EIA are still development development um, there are actually still a lot of projects um, that is not specifically um, um, under category A and B. Um, there are cases that the preparer or the sponsoring agency would go for, um, would uh, consider their project as, as a category C, or there are cases um, they would consider it at category D. Um, but then again, it depends on the assessment of DNR, A and B. Another is the nature of methods of assessment. There are cases and um, when it comes to assessment that you will just do rapid or there are cases that even if it needs um, even if it needs for example a water analysis they do not do any water analysis and they would just do it qua qualitative analysis not quantitative um, so there is actually if you will read throughout the uh, uh, DAO 0330 there's actually no specific um, um, well there is a specific um, Acceptable, for example, for water, acceptable um, chemical um, chemical um, state of your water for it to be drinkable, yes. For irrigation, yes, there is. Um, but when it comes to AA preparation, um, it actually, um, again, depends on your study. But my point is, for example, if your project would pollute a water that is source of drinking, then therefore you have to do a a comprehensive um, water analysis of the water on the proposed uh, development project at the same time um, based on that baseline, situa uh, baseline situation you will definitely have to do also uh, analysis an honest and correct uh, water analysis of um, of the water uh, when the project commences um, um, however um, how can I explain this? Um, okay, for example, in water analysis, there are parameters like, for example, total solid, um, for example, um, salinity. Um, we have total solids, hardness of water, um, bacteriological, bacteriological um, status of the water, like if there are analysis if it's just a coliform or a so those are the methods of assessment however it is not indicated in the DAO as to when it comes to EA study that would involve water would it include only the physical aspect like the color of the water the turbidity of the water or should it include also the chemical analysis of the water and the bacteriological aspect of the water so you know it's not specific that's what I meant uh, at the same time, the other issues of EIA is um, the relative roles of participants in the process. Um, um, there are cases. Uh, there are cases that when a certain AIA preparers would submit a AIA study, um, the part, the, the group, uh, the EIA group of the certain study, their expertise does not actually connotes um, the specific study. For example, the study is about um, a, a development project on um, creating a building, creating a new building, a new building. Um, however, uh, one of the EIA preparers, one of the group members of the EIA preparer is a doctor, medical doctor. 
So, you know, we, we can say that, well, what could be the possible role of the doctor in, in the EIA project or the EIS report in, in crafting and creating the EIS report if it's all about building a new building? Am I correct? Building a new building. So, you know, um, the relative roles of participants in the EIA process, that is why it is important um, that if you will prepare an EIA project, of course, your expertise should be in line with the EIA study. Yes. Of course, the quality of assessments, um, because um, when we do our EIS or as we write our EIS, um, it's actually more of um, the result of the study. And it's actually not detailed, unlike when we do our research. For example, if we are going to do an assessment of water quality of certain wells in a certain barangay, what we will do is, you know, we collect the data, we analyze, and then we um, interpret the data with the statistical tool. So we will do ANOVA, we will do DMRT, postdoc analysis, and then we discuss, and then we interpret, and make, we make conclusions. But um, with EIA, it's more uh, with assessments or EIA, it's not really that rigorous. It's more of the um, you know, surface assessment, I should say, um, in which um, that is why EMB, DNR EMB look at the EIA group and look at them as to if their expertise connotes or, or, or consolidates with the EIA study because, you know, it's more of a professional um, expertise. It's more of a professional um, decision. So again, that is um, how important is the roles of the group of a certain member in a group in the EIA process. And of course, um, beyond the decision or the post um, EIA activity. So um, there are cases, as I said earlier, that you were not able to um, quantify or you were not able to put into the adverse effects um, a potential effect, a potential impact or adverse impact when that's when the certain project uh, started or when it commenced uh, and then um you just figured out the adverse effect when it already started or when it is um for example if it's a building if it's already being used in which um that is actually one one of the problems with um with eia as to what will be your decision um after after it was being built uh, for example um Okay, you 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 apply for an ECC for a new building, and then um, and then you were issued an ECC. However, later on, um, there was a sudden earthquake, and you just found out that your building is actually located at the top of a fault line, and because of that sudden earthquake, it was a quite strong earthquake. So you know the 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 walls of your building was shattered, and you know there were a lot of cracks. In which, therefore, when you did your EIA, you did not did it very comprehensively, and you were not you did not um, consider that very important aspect, which is possible, you know, earthquake, and therefore you did not study um, the fault lines that is located in your um, in your um, development project area. So. Um, when in fact, if you studied or if you created or crafted your EIS report good enough, then therefore you would have already known that there is a fault line on that area. And, you know, therefore you could have not built a building on that specific area. Um, yeah. And then, of course, of course uh, the last one is... Um, And of course, the last one is the uh, beyond the project assessment. How are you going to assess? Or, or um, usually, um, in a real context, in a real context, um, this current issues is is um, actually is actually really happening in, in a real sense. In 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 a real uh, in a re in real context, there are. I'd say not a lot. There are few, but I would say there is a project. There is a project. Um, that um, um, that was not assessed well. Let us say, uh, okay, um, this is just a, a, a make story. This is not true. This is a, just a make story. Um, uh, example, there is a project. And it was um, 
assess enough, good enough, um, that the um, it was assessed enough and good enough that the DNRAM be issued an ECC. However, it was actually not properly assessed. Uh, maybe I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe they have connections with the EMB or DNR. I don't know. We have the connections with the agencies and sorts, but it was not properly assessed. But um, the ECC was issued. However, um, since it was not properly assessed after such time, there was an adverse effect that was not listed and that was not stated in the EAS or in the EIA study. And then in which, um, after the project assessment that you did not, um, that you did not put in your EIA study and it happened, then therefore it will create another problem. The DNR EMB might not, might not ask, maybe they will ask you to shut down your project or you know, to, to, um, to, um, I don't know, to um, abandon your project in some sort. Of course, the DNRMB, what they will do is, is um, to assess and, of course, suggest, again, um, a mitigating activity to mitigate the adverse effects. Yes, they can do that. But the problem is, it would have been assessed and it would have been addressed already um, beforehand, the study was um a comp uh, the study was uh before the study was approved if you uh, made your ei study good enough and you properly assess all the adverse effects to the environment so yeah those are the current issues in eia do you have any questions so far uh yes um uh, ma'am everyone for attending our class um, I will be seeing you um, on the 26th I think or maybe we will not have classes it depends I will plan it out but I will let you know um, I will be posting um, information and announcement in our day but as of today I know our class